Did I get too many? Eh, no such thing. Oh my gosh, ah. Hello friends! Welcome back to another wintry atmospheric themed video. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all of these amazing books to read during winter time, Christmas time. I've got classics, vintagey books, Regency Victorian period romance, middle grade, mystery, Agatha Christie, Hallmark movie feel good type books. I even have some fantasy and some sci-fi, so we're covering all bases here. And just so you know, I will be saving my personal favorites for the very, very end of the video. I have two that I'm obsessed with, so definitely keep watching if you wanna see my personal favorite favorites. And just a disclaimer, I haven't read every single one of them. Most of them I have, most of them I love. There are a few recommendations that I got from you guys and actually also from today's sponsor, which is Likewise. So you'll know what I mean when I say I got recommendations from them because Likewise is the most amazing app. And here's how it works. So one day I finished reading Snowdrift, which is this Georgia Hare book, and I loved the vintage wintery vibes of it, and I wanted more books like that. I Googled stuff, but there are so many books, and I really just wanted like a list of vintagey Christmas books. So I looked up the app, and it was truly what I was looking for. So I got on the app, and it asks you what types of books, movies, and TV shows you're interested in. And first, I just focused on books. So it has you go through a list of books and genres, and it will have you choose what you're interested in and then after that I will give you specific recommendations based on your reading tastes which was exactly what I wanted. So here's how it works. Every day users get personalized recommendations that they can swipe through in the today tab and then if you find a book that you like you can save it for later by pressing the little save button. Another one of my favorite things is that there's an asks function so if you want to ask the community on Likewise for specific book recommendations you can just write a little post and ask and people will respond to you. So I actually did this. I asked for or like vintage romance regency books and I got recommendations so quickly so if someone recommends a book or if you find a book on there that you like you can order it directly through Amazon on the app the interface is so user-friendly I love the layout and design of it it's very easy to use there are a couple books in this pile that I have here that I'm going to recommend to you that I read because of likewise and love I'm not kidding one of them is probably going to be in my top 10 books for the entire year so if you also want to get amazing recommendations for not only books but also movies and TV shows you you can go to likewise.com slash darling desi and i'll have the link down in my description box and you can download the app and the best part is that it is free you don't have to pay anything for it so go download the app and get some amazing recommendations for any types of books that you want christmasy books vintagey books anything it's all there so thank you again so much to likewise for sponsoring this video and supporting my channel all right so let's move on and get started recommending these amazing books to you guys up first i have dickens at christmas by Charles Dickens. The artwork is amazing. There are like there are some there's some mistletoe and so many presents and cheese. Ah, oh, I just love it. So this one is a selection of seasonal writings by Charles Dickens. It includes The Christmas Carol, but it includes a lot of his other shorter stories as well. No one writes about Christmas quite like Charles Dickens. So I would recommend this to you if you like classics or like Victorian Christmas time this is for you. Next up, we've got a YA book, and that is Castle in the Clouds by Kirsten Geer. Geyer. And the cover is so beautiful. Look, oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's about a girl named Sophie who gets an internship at Castle in the Clouds, which is this beautiful, massive grand hotel up in the mountains. It snows every day. They have tons of events like letting lanterns off into the sky. They have a Christmas ball. So while Sophie is interning at Castle in the Clouds, there are some guests that she starts to suspect are not who they say they are. And she learns about how there were these people called the Grand Hotel Kidnappers that had gone around to different hotels, kidnapped children, and demand ransoms. And she thinks that's what they might be doing. So you've got the side of mystery, but then you've also got this side of romance that she has with one of the other boys at the hotel and they dance at this Christmas ball and it's beautiful. Plus it's set in Europe. How can you not like Christmas books set in Europe? It's also not too long, so you can get through it pretty quickly. Next, I can't not talk about 
Ella Montgomery. So this is The Golden Road. It's a cute little baby edition, but I love the cover because it shows the kids playing in the snow. And then along with this one, I have to recommend The Blue Castle by her as well, which I have recommended before and you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it, but hear me out. Ella Montgomery writes winter so well. It's beautiful it's poetry. I mean, it's not poetry. She doesn't write poetry, but <laughs> I mean, it's poetry in the sense that the writing is so stunning. The way she writes about snow and the mountains and nature. So if you're into cottage core, winter cottage core, Anna Green Gables, you know, that type of vibe, then you've got to read these books. This is about a girl named Sarah who doesn't like the idea of winter. And she comes up with an idea to make the dreary days be less dreary. So she decides that with her friends, they will publish a magazine and it will have everything from fashion to personals, columns about interesting people in the town. And their magazine quickly becomes one of the most entertaining magazines that anyone in their town has ever read before. And it does take place on Prince Edward Island, same as Anne of Green Gables. It's very sweet and very atmospheric, such a good story. Okay, this next book pays homage to Agatha Christie. It's a middle grade set in England, such a good whodunit story. Oh, I love it. And it is Aggie Morton Mystery Queen, Peril at Owl Park by Marthy Jocelyn. Look at that cover. Look at how stunning. On the top of the book, it says, inspired by the real life queen of crime, Agatha Christie. And then I saw that this boy, his name is Hector Perrault which is like Hercule Poirot, like one of Agatha Christie's most famous leading detectives. So I love all of the little things that the author did to pay homage to Agatha Christie. You can tell that the author really is a true fan. And there are even some lines in the book that they say that are almost directly taken from some Agatha Christie books, not in a spoiler way, but just some kind of iconic lines. So I absolutely loved that. So it's about our main character, Aggie, which, you know, Aggie, Agatha Christie starts off in the beginning with Aggie traveling to Owl Park, which is this massive estate that she is going to stay at for Christmas. And it's set in a cute little town in England. And I honestly don't remember the time period. I want to say Victorian, but it doesn't actually say. You just kind of get vibes that it's like, you know, back in the early 1900s, possibly before that. And then on Christmas morning, they discover a dead body and Aggie's like, let me at it. I'm going to figure out who the murderer was. The way the whodunit detective type trope was done was so well and so true to a lot of Agatha Christie's writing. It is very fast paced, very fun, very festive England Christmas manor house vibes. And I was going to save this one for the last because it is one of my favorites, but I didn't want to have like too many of the good ones at the end in case people don't watch all the way to the end. And I have to thank Liv from Life with Liv because she talked about this, I think on Instagram. And and that's where I saw it for the first time and I knew I had to have it. So thank you so much, Liv, for talking about this book. And then next we've got a book that is a bit outside of what I have been reading a lot lately. It's a sci-fi book and that is Early Riser by this author. So if you're into sci-fi, listen up. This is a dystopian set in a fictional Wales. And winter is a time when people actually hibernate. Starting on Fat Thursday, everybody starts to count their calories, make sure they're getting enough food. If you're poor and in the more poor class, then you struggle more to get all of the food that you need and you're more likely to die during winter time. So most people hibernate, but there are a select few that work for the winter consults. They are there to work and make sure that everybody is hibernating properly, but they've also got another job. There are night walkers. I haven't read the entire book. I've only read about a third of it. So from what I can tell, there are people who don't hibernate properly. They wake up because of these vivid dreams and they walk around and um, they, they will sometimes eat people. So they need to keep an eye out for night walkers, but also other people who sleepwalk and they're noticing this pattern of really crazy vivid dreams that people are having and causing them to wake up from their hibernation, but not really awake because they're sleepwalking. And then they notice that dreams start to kill these people in their sleep. So there, there's a lot going on. I don't wanna to go too much more into it. I haven't made my way completely through this one, but if you like sci-fi, dystopian, fictional whales. Um, I listen to the audiobooks and they all have these amazing British accents. I love it. You should definitely check this one out. It's really, really intriguing. Now making a turn back to Agatha Christie. We've got Murder on the Orient Express and 
Book Yule of Poirot's Christmas. I am really into detective novels, especially golden age whodunit mystery novels, and in my reading experience so far, no one does it as good as Agatha Christie. Murder on the Orient Express, an absolute classic, a whodunit murder mystery set on a train. Very atmospheric, very wintry. And then we've got Book Yule of Poirot's have you guys noticed I'm slightly getting better at saying his name? It's still not there completely, but I'm working on it and I'm proud of myself. It's the little victories, right? You know, sometimes you just gotta be proud of yourself for doing something so small, but yet important to you. Okay, so this one is set during Christmas time. It's very festive. It's an English manor house in the countryside. This family is getting together and the father, the head of the family, is found murdered in his study. Bacchiel Poirot is called in to help this other detective and they work together to figure out who did it. So this one is definitely more Christmassy than this than this one. This one is more wintry. This one is more Christmassy. They are both really, really good. Highly recommend. Okay, I know I talked about Dickens before, but we've got to come back to him because we've got two Dickens books here. We've got The Christmas Carol, of course. And then also I've got Mr. Dickens and His Carol by Samantha Silva. And this is actually one of the books that was recommended to me on Likewise. I have started this and it's actually quite funny and entertaining. On the back there's a tagline that says, a story with the wit of Shakespeare in love and the evergreen heart of A Christmas Carol. It's a poignant story about the creation of The Christmas Carol. Next, we've got a middle grade that I have not read. The cover is beautiful. It takes place, I believe, in Norway. And that is The Way Past Winter by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. I want this outfit. I want to wear this and own it and frolic through the woods in it. It's about a girl named Mila or Mila. I'm not sure how you would pronounce that or if that's like a Norwegian name. And one morning she wakes up to find that her brother is missing and a dark clue suggests that he followed a stranger that visited them in the night and then as she goes out to search for her brother she discovers that all of the boys in the village have vanished except for one his name is rune and together mila and rune set out on this adventure and an extraordinary journey across snow-covered mountains to the furthest corner of the frozen north I've heard that the winter riding just sparkles. It makes you feel like you're there. So if you like middle grade stories of adventure with the backdrop of Norway, then I would recommend this one to you. So this next one is actually a memoir, so it's nonfiction, but it kind of goes along with the sparkling backdrop of winter, but maybe less sparkly because that is A Woman in the Polar Night, a classic memoir of a year in the Arctic wilderness by Christian Ritter. So this is a true story of a woman who decided to go spend an entire year in the Arctic wilderness. It takes place in 1934 and Christian, I'm sorry, I know I'm not saying her name right, but she leaves her comfortable life in Austria and travels to a remote Arctic island called Spitsbergen. She ends up thinking it's gonna be a nice relaxing trip, you know, living off the grid, focusing on reading books and cooking, living off of the land and getting away from all of the distractions of city life. But when they arrive, because she goes there with her husband, she realizes that they will be living in this tiny ramshackle little cottage. I don't even know if I would call it a cottage, it's more of like a shed. Well, it's not like, it's like a mixture between a cottage and a shed. It's just this tiny little ramshackle place. And it's hundreds of miles from the nearest little town. So she realizes is that they will be battling all of the elements just to survive, let alone like live and have a good time. She has encounters with bears and seals and she treks over ice and she goes through months of hardly any sunlight and she eventually finds herself falling in love with the harsh otherworldly beauty of the Arctic. She ends up gaining a greater sense of peace and appreciation for life in general. I highly recommend that if you're in the mood for a memoir, this is one of the best ones you can read during winter time. So this one is one that has such high reviews on Goodreads. I never realized how high the reviews were until I saw Liv, again, I love her. She was talking about this on Instagram and about how it's one that she started and she couldn't put down and it's so good and wants everybody to read it. So I decided now is the time for me to read it. And that is North Child by Edith 
Patau, Patau. So yes, I haven't read this one, but I'm taking Liv's word for it and all of the amazing five-star reviews that I saw on Goodreads. So this one is a middle grade book that is about our main character named Rose. She was born facing north and the legend has it that if a baby is born facing north, it means that she will travel and go on some great journey. On the back, it says, making a pact with an enormous white bear, Rose travels on his back to a mysterious castle that holds a dark enchantment, a darker temptation, and the key to her true destiny. So I'm thinking if you like magic castles, winter journeys, then you would probably like this one. So again, thank you so much to Liv for recommending this to me. I'm so excited to read that one. This next one is for you fantasy lovers out there, and that is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. This is a bit of a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. It's either set in like a fictional Russia or real Russia. I don't remember if the town is fictional or not. Russian fairy tale, folktale vibes. That is this book. I'm not a huge fan of everything that Naomi Novik writes, but this one absolutely did it for me. The winter atmosphere is so dense and so strong. The snow and the ice and the magic is so good. It's about our main character named Miriam, who is very successful with her father money lender business and because of how good she is with money there's a rumor that she can turn anything into gold you know like Rumpelstiltskin story and this rumor attracts the fairy queen not queen king it attracts the fairy king of winter himself he basically takes her and wants her to come live in his winter kingdom and she doesn't want to go there so he sets a pretty impossible task for her and if she can accomplish it then she can return home and if not she will die if you like winter fairy tales medieval russian folktale vibes definitely pick this one up. Okay, we're down to my final two. I am obsessed with these books. I love them. I have been sleeping with them on my bed because I love the stories so much and I don't want to leave the characters. Okay, so the first one is Christmas on the Island by Jenny Colgan, one of my absolute favorite authors. I hadn't really heard about this book until I saw on Kira Foster's channel. I will link her down below. She's amazing and always has such good book recommendations as well. What I love about this book and all of Jenny Colgan's books is that they're set in Scotland, usually in quaint little towns, the Scottish Highlands, the atmosphere of the trees and the hills and the fog and the mist and everything is so transporting. Like I always feel like I'm there in Scotland when I'm reading her books. I also love the narrator for this one on the audiobook. She has a Scottish accent. It was just so delightful to listen to. So this book specifically is set on an island, so it's not on the mainland and it is very, very cold and very dark in winter the sun goes down at like two or three o'clock i don't remember but it's very dark and i love that a lot of the atmosphere is the cold wind and the dark but also the light the street for the kids to walk home after school because when they get out of school it's dark and there are all these lamp lights and candles and stuff for them to find their way home so even though it was a bit dark and bleak and windy and cold all of the residents of the town on this island love it and adore the island for what it is and in a way they romanticize it it gives them an excuse to be cozy and go to cafes and indulge in mince pies and tea, hot chocolate, and enjoy it. This book features multiple different characters. We get different characters' perspectives throughout the book. Jenny Colgan's writing style is just very easy to read, but it's also descriptive and atmospheric. This is a book that I would recommend to anyone if you like cozy, warm, festive stories. It's not your fluffy type of Hallmark movie type book. There are some characters in here. One of them is a refugee from war-torn Syria, and someone is also dying of cancer so there is a lot of depth to it it's definitely not fluff i would say if you don't like the fluffy holiday romances this isn't that it's more than that it's not the most amazing novel of all time but it's the type of novel that when i finished it i couldn't move on to any other books i wanted to go back to the characters i fell in love with every single one of them and all of their festivities it was just like a warm hug reading this book so it's definitely one of my new favorites and finally my favorite book on this list and one that i was also recommended because of Likewise, which I owe so much to now because this is the one that's gonna be in my top 10. And I've read almost 100 books this year, so this being in the top 10 is saying a lot. And also this author, I now want to read all of her books, and that is 
A Holiday by Gaslight, a Victorian Christmas novella by Mimi Matthews. I have to be honest, the cover is what drew me in in the beginning. My goodness, did this book do wonders to my heart. It's like, you know when you feel secondhand embarrassment, but this was like secondhand love, I guess. The main characters were so sweet. The way they flirted and the way they interacted. Oh my gosh. Like I said, it's a Victorian Christmas novella and novella basically just means it's a short novel. It is about our main character named Sophie and she has a sister and Sophie is the less pretty sister. And she kind of considers it her duty to get married, not necessarily for love in order to support her family and also support her sister. So in the beginning, she's been courting this man named Edward Sharp for a couple months, but they're just not getting along well. They literally never speak. He's basically like her escort to take her to the theater and walks in the park, but they like, they don't speak. And so eventually she decides to call it off and she tells him that they just don't suit. But then we see Edward's perspective and he read this gentleman's guide to society and how to interact with women. And the book basically said, don't talk to the woman about anything besides the weather. And he doesn't know what to do and he's just kind of a bit awkward. So after she decides to call it off, she reconsiders it and kind of gives him a second chance. The way their relationship progresses, she invites him and his family to her father's estate for Christmas. And she decides to give them eight days to get to know each other. There are scenes where they're going out on sleigh rides and they go to look for mistletoe and a Yule log and they have these really nice dinners and it's so sweet. It's the best word I can think of to describe it. So if you're looking for historical romance, Jane Austen vibes, Victorian Regency, all of that, please pick this one up and let me know if you enjoy it. I can't recommend it enough and it's so short. It's just so close to my heart now. I just, I love it so much. I probably shouldn't love a book this much, but who am I kidding? All right, I think those are all of the books. I am probably forgetting some. If I am, I will put them in the description box. I, I usually do forget some, so definitely check the description box. There will probably be a few down there as well. I would love to know some of your favorite books to read during winter, if you could recommend any to me. I would be so grateful, and then others can scroll through the comments and find some recommendations as well. And a thank you again to Likewise for sponsoring this video. I hope you're having an amazing season so far, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, friends. Thank you.